Listen, I didn't want to be the one to break it to you. It's out of my hands at this point. But if you're doing UV unwrapping manually, there, there, there's something seriously wrong. We're in the age of automated UV unwrapping. And I'm going to give you the power of automated UV unwrapping so you never have to do it again. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. More about that later. What What is it that I mean? Suppose you have like an object like Suzanne. Comes with a default unwrap, but let's say for some reason you don't like it. Okay, fine. So you hit U, you go to Smart UV Project, you pick some settings, click Unwrap. And you're like, okay, smart UV project. Actually, I wanted 30 degrees and you hit unwrap. And every time you do it again and again and again, if you want to make a seam, you have to mark the seam and then you need to unwrap again. So it's really hard to iterate. What I propose is a simple solution, which I'll show you how to use. I made this into an add-on, but this tutorial is giving you the power to make it yourself. What if we could prototype this fast, right? You pick your edge angle. You say, okay, 40 degrees. Actually, what does 50 degrees look like? You, you iterate as fast as you want. Add a seam here. This is geometry nodes based UV unwrapping. Okay, I've said the same sentence enough times. Let's begin. So we're in geo nodes. I'm going to take my target object and make that a geo nodes group. And let's talk about the theory. Any object that already has a UV map has a bunch of data on what we call the face corners. Every single face corner has a UV map attribute. This tells us how do I map image textures or whatever. This can actually be overwritten. So if I make a vector, I overwrite the UV map, make sure that again, it's on face corners corners, the key insight is that by default, this isn't going to do anything, right? So if I make a material and I view the texture coordinates, you're going to see this is entirely black, but anything we do to this won't affect it. But when I disable it, we have our UVs. I learned this from Cartesian Caramel. Instead of vector, make sure you use a 2D vector because UV map is just X and Y. And then all of the sudden, you can actually start editing the UVs. First of all, it would be nice to make a kind of viewer where whatever unwrap I have, it goes to this zero to one time but in 3D space. So for now, I'm just going to set it to be itself before we edit it. So we have our UV map and then to project it downwards, all I need to say is take every single point and put it where its UV is. Literally a set position to the UV map attribute like this, and now it is in UV space, which turns out 0 to 1 is a bit smaller. This is looking a bit awkward, yet it clearly is the same unwrap we have here. The reason for this is, is we have all of these islands that are meant to be separate, yet our edges are all connected in the original model, so there's no way to make separate islands. Except, you could totally split the edges before you do this. Now none of the edges are connected. Anything I do to this UV map will now update live. So let's say I do a bit of an offset like this. That's going to happen. But much more interestingly, if we look at the attribute and then edit, you can see again, it's editing the UV coordinates. I'm going to take all of this. I'm basically going to call this our viewer. And now the name of the game is picking cool unwraps that are useful to us. The first one I want to talk about is using this default UV unwrap. I'm going to connect this to our attribute and view it. By default, it's making some weird stuff. What this is doing is it's calculating a UV unwrap on the fly. So if I change the margin, you can see the margin changes here. If I set it to conformal versus angle, it does different things. And to make this look better, we just need to say what are the seams of this model? Well, ideally, I want to look at really sharp corners or edges. For example, here we have a very sharp kind of hard surface difference. This should be a seam, and maybe this should be a seam. And because we can calculate seams on the fly, so too can we UV unwrap on the fly. I go to my edge angle. That will tell us the angle of every single edge. Surprise, surprise. So here's what that's going to look like. You can see very sharp areas are quite white. I'm going to take the unsigned angle because I don't care if it's positive or negative. And I'm going to check where is this greater than or less than a certain number. Connect this to our seam. This unwrap is if we took each individual face and made it its own island, we get this. Yet, as we increase the angle, you can see we get different unwraps. And you could just kind of pick different angles and it will update live. If I add faces, it will respect that. If I change the mesh kind of like this, it will update our UVs. However, if I rotate the mesh, this isn't really going to affect the UVs. They're going to kind of look like I put them on their side. This is great. But what if I wanted to actually pick seams, right? I go to my mesh, I select some edges, I say make this a seam. It doesn't seem to care about that. That is because we are saying our seams are totally determined by the edge angle. It doesn't actually care about the seam attribute. But the moment you actually select a seam, if you look at your edges, we're going to get a UV seam attribute, which will either be on or off. So let's look at the UV seam. If I kind of view this attribute, you can see the seam kind of knows where it's supposed to be. So here I made another seam, etc. We can say, look at either of these. Edge angle condition 
or or you can look at a UV seam and then you can see that's updated. Clear seams, you're going to see that's updating. I'm going to add a single edge as a seam. It's going to update accordingly. Let's just add a bunch of these. Boom. So this is our unwrap. Just going to replace this with a torus. And notice that if I pick certain angles, you're going to see this like torus unwrap. But if it goes too big, it's just going to disappear. If I wanted to flatten a torus, I would make one here along the uh, loop. So I'm going to mark seam. And by the way, we could even say like only use the seams. And then the second seam is because this is still kind of like a tube in a sense is I would go around here, mark this as a seam as well. And now you can see the torus has flattened into a sheet basically. This is our custom unwrap that can be edited at any point. And for the material, let's do something a bit more interesting. I'm going to connect a image texture onto here. Here I have a picture of me presenting something. Let's use that. That is wrapped onto the surface in a way that can be edited at any time. In this case, the UVs are very kind of small. They're not taking up a lot of space. So I would take a vector math. I would scale this by like a big number. And then you can see our image is wrapping onto here. Also, if I don't scale this and then remove this, it knows to use the UVs by by default. But the second part of UV unwrapping is packing them efficiently, and there's also a node for that. So you can just say pack UV islands, and it will try to create a more efficient packing that you can kind of say rotate or don't. I found that this doesn't find the best packing in the world, but it does work. And then I guess last thing I want to say is we do have two UV unwrap methods. You can use an angle-based approach or a conformal approach. I'll be honest, I don't know much about the difference here, but here if you look at the face, cheek here is kind of torn. Whereas if I go to conformal, kind of mean maintains these cheeks, so it kind of either prioritizes keeping angles or areas or whatever. Guys, we, we gotta take it down a notch. It's time to get serious. Serious? What about instead we get Curious, which the sponsor of this video, Brilliant, will help you do. What Brilliant offers is a very easy way to learn hard skills, mathematics, programming, a lot of technical stuff, and it works better than just kind of like opening up a textbook because it is interactive. That's kind of the key insight. As you learn, you do these interactive puzzles, games, things that ensure you're understanding what you're doing before you proceed. And because studies probably, I don't know, studies probably show that the best way to learn is making it a daily habit instead of just studying once. Brilliant is great for this because it's not only on desktop, you could take it on the go with mobile. You know me, specifically, I'm going to recommend programming, particularly the Python module, because that is what's compatible with Blender, and that's what I happen to be interested in. If all this sounds good to you, you're going to see a link below along with a, probably this side, QR code. What this is going to get you is 30 free full days of Brilliant, and additionally, you're going to save 20% off a annual membership, all with this link and QR code and all this. Now that we've unwrapped that sponsor, let's go back to UV unwrapping. One projection that's pretty useful is the project from view. Now it's kind of facing this way. If I rotate this way, we're projecting from view. I kind of want that functionality, but specifically from the top down, kind of like a bird's eye perspective, maybe also the front and then maybe also the side. So this is what's called a planar projection. If I wanted to project this flat, it's almost like we're suppressing the Z axis. I care about only where it is on the X and Y position of every single face corner and then project it such that we're only multiplying by one, one, zero such that it's scaled by zero like that. And I can use this as our coordinates. And then I'm also going to pack UV islands. And there you go. The packing kind of separates the eyes from the rest of it. If I kind of look at this by uh, disabling the viewer, kind of projects fine from here, yet it kind of does this vertical stretching, which in this case makes a lot of sense. So let's just do a checkerboard. This is going to be the easiest way to see what's going on. We're making sure to use our new UV coordinates. And you can see from the top view, it's a perfect checkerboard, yet we get this stretching. We can also project from the x-axis. So instead of 1, 1, 0, we'd expect it to be, I think it would be 0, because I don't care about the x-axis, 1, 1, which is almost correct, but here's kind of an issue we have here. When we do this, we're flattening it to the x-axis. can't really pack this if it isn't on the x-y plane, or kind of sitting in this like 0 to 1 square. We then also need to take this and rotate it, so it's sitting flat on the ground. So let's do a vector rotate. If I want to rotate this you know, to be flat, I can do a rotation about the y axis. So 0, 1, 0. And then I just pick an angle, right? And that's how we get our rotation. So I'm going to rotate by 90 degrees, hack UV islands. And that's something that makes sense. If I disable my viewer, you can see it's looking pretty stretched, except for kind of this axis where it's perfectly uh, correct. Finally, we can also project about the y axis 1, 0, 1. But again, we have this kind of issue of rotation where it's not laying flat, we should be rotating about the x 
x-axis, which will flatten this, make this two-dimensional, and now we are good to go. So now we're projecting on the x-axis. So, so far we've done kind of default on wraps, we've done planar, and let's do one more. Let's do a box projection. So what is a box projection? You could think of this as basically three or six, but actually three planar projections. We have this top down, where it kind of looks planar this way. We have the y-axis projection and the x-axis projection. And what we need to do is for different faces, we need to say, are you doing a projection this way? Are we using the top down, the forwards backwards? It is a bunch of planar projections, but we need to choose which one is ideal. Well, this turns out to actually be quite easy. For every single face, we can look at its normal, which way it's kind of pointing outwards, and we see what, what does it kind of match the most? Does it like up, down, left, right, etc.? A face like this one that is kind of pointing this way would obviously do a planar projection from like down the uh, y axis, whereas one kind of towards the top is begging to do a z, you know, top bottom projection. Take the normal of the faces, and I need to see is it like x, y, or z dominant? A good way to do this is if I have a vector like this one, I look at its like x component, its like z component, its y component, and I see which one is the biggest. So in this case, this vertical is the biggest, meaning it's pointing upwards mainly, so I'd choose this to be z axis. If instead it was kind of pointing like this, it has a lot of x axis, but not a lot of y axis, so it's x dominant. I'm going to take an absolute value because I'm going to say pointing this way and then pointing this way both mean x. I don't care if it's negative or positive. Then look at x, y, and z and check which of these are the biggest. So we're going to take the maximum of x and y, and then we're going to take the maximum of that with z, which will exactly tell us which dimension is the biggest, but we don't know which it corresponds to. Is this maximum the x, or was it the y, or was it the z? We just need to check, is this maximum equal to the x, in which case we'll do an x projection. Is it equal to the y, and or is it equal to the z? And for each one of these, we do a different planar projection like we were talking about. So we can just kind of reuse our code, or really our nodes. So let's say by default, we'll say no matter what, it's going to be a up, down, z projection. Well, we already know how to do this. We take the position and we multiply by 1, 1, 0. Great, we have a top down projection. We're then going to check, okay, if it's not z, but it happens to be x, for example, then we're going to do something different. Mix vector saying it's either going to be this or a second option. And that second option is going to be what we did before. This is a y axis projection we did here. Bring this here and say that this is the second option, which you can see almost looks like we're rotating the object. That should only apply, the y axis should only apply if it is equal to the maximum. So I'm going to connect that there. And now you see we have kind of two overlapping things because some faces belong to one, some faces belong to the other. Finally, I'm going to mix the last condition saying, was it actually a x? By the way, we don't need this z because we're kind of assuming it. And then if it is x dominant, we do the same thing as before, but now we just kind of modify it a little. Suppressing on the x, but it was rotating, I believe, on the y is what we had, which now has three different projection methods. Finally, I'm just going to take this and pack UV islands, and we get what kind of looks like a box projection. If I do a UV edit and I say do a Q projection, box projection, we get this kind of mess, which you're going to see looks quite familiar when we don't pack the UV islands. Kind of looks a lot like this if I rotated it upside down. Then if I take this and pack the islands, well, it's going to take a moment. I guess this is a more efficient packing algorithm. I think it's because we have this exact shape method that we don't have access to. But either way, we now have this new projection. I disable the viewer and now you can see it kind of has a uniform checkerboard where a top facing face, this face is upwards, is going to be correct on the z axis. Some of these faces are going to be correct on the y axis like these, some of them on the x axis. This is usually a pretty good option if you want a overall nice unwrap that looks kind of seamless. I'm going to say like dirt texture seamless. What do we got? Bring it to Papa. Seamless dirt. Oh no no, that's not seamless is it? This one's seamless. So this is going to be our dirt. Bring in a image texture node. What image texture is that going to be? It's going to be our dirt. We view it, and now it has a pretty uniform projection. Let's take our islands and scale them, which will make the texture smaller or bigger. I'm going to set this to three, and now we have a very nice uniform dirt. What I did for this, like, UV plus add-on, so let me 
me just kind of apply this again. UV plus and enable the viewer. What I did is I basically did this and overhauled it. I calculated how good was the packing, how many islands was it, boundary edges. What we did is we did edge angle, which has that angle and you can use seams if you want to. We also did a planar projection and a box projection. So if I go to planar, you can see was it the X axis, the Y axis, the Z axis. This is exactly how I made it, but with a few bells and whistles. This one also has cylinder, sphere, what I call individual, and my favorite random projection, which just kind of uses a different idea, but it's, you know, the same underlying concept. Hopefully you learned about automatic UV unwrapping. Oy! I didn't want this to be too much of a shill for UV+, plus, but it does exist. That's why it was on my mind. And er, hopefully you learned something. Goodbye.